The sad truth is that many couples are broke, living in poverty or living very, very close to poverty mm. line. Um, but you wouldn't know because on the outside, things look like they're intact. Yeah. Things look like they're nice, you know, the cars that they're driving, where they live, the clothes on their backs and all sorts of things. Everything looks good on the outside. But if things were to be unraveled, we'll be shocked by the things that we find, right, in terms of their financial position. Um so today what we're going to encourage you and talk to you about is maybe some of the things that you could do differently if you are in that position as a couple where you're thinking, you know what, if we're being honest, we look rich, but yeah, we are quite on the poverty line. Mm. Um, now, just to be clear, when we're talking about poor and poverty, what we're really talking about, I guess, is a position where you basically don't have any um, any cash you know, particularly anything that you can fall back on. So you have n- very, very little savings, if any. Yeah. Um, you may have no, um, like, buffer whatsoever anyway in terms of, like, a, a cash savings, a cash buffer, an emergency fund, a sinking fund, that type of thing. Uh, the second thing that you might not even have is any room in your budget. Right. All the money that comes in goes out, you know. And also you might be very, very... Uh, I guess on the edge in the sense that if you were to lose your job today or you were, one of you was to lose your jobs today, you would immediately be in a very, very negative position right? Uh, because you don't have that source of income. And so that's the kind of position that we're thinking about. And so today we're going to give you some, I guess, and let's talk about it. And also give, share some insights and practical tips of what you can do to kind of change that around. So one thing that can cause people to act rich, but the truth is that things are really not as they seem, Mm. is the fact that sometimes people lack discipline when it comes to money. And I think this one is a, it's it's true for a lot of people. I think we found ourselves in this situation years, years back when we first got married. And the simple reality was like, we lacked discipline with money. Like we got married and didn't really think, okay, let's sit down and come up with a plan or sort of idea of what we're going to do with our money Mm -hmm. and how we're going to use our money, where we're going to allocate it which sort of pots is it going to go into and stuff. Mm. I remember we literally had one account and everything came out of that one account. And one of the things with doing that, like one of the cons with doing that is that you'll find that it's very, very difficult to then keep up with what's going out. Where's it going? What's it for? Because you can imagine if all your bills come out of one account, your food money comes out of one account, your um your savings are also set in that same account, your spending money comes out of that account. How do you even keep up with mm-hmm. what's going on? Mm-hmm. So you, you're lacking that discipline in sort of like putting things in place yeah. and making sure that everything is where it should be. And at times when we say lack of discipline, people might think, well, people that lack discipline sometimes are people that don't have the money or people that have less money coming in but this also happens with people that are earning loads of money like people that are rich rich Mm. and have the money sometimes you lack that discipline of saying okay now that i'm earning all this money let me be disciplined with it let me allocate it rightly let me allocate it to the right places let me use it for the right things whilst making sure Mm-hmm. As you mentioned in the intro, whilst making sure that if anything does happen, I'm sort of covered and I've yeah. got backup. Yeah, and and discipline. I guess it's easy to say discipline means have a budget, but I think it's bigger than that. It's it's having a budget is a part of that, but yeah. you know, a budget works differently differently for different people. Yeah. For some of you, yes, you will need to count every single penny on a spreadsheet, hundred percent. Whereas for others. Um, you might just be okay with kind of having an understanding of, okay, we spend around about this much on this and about yeah. this much on that, but let's just make sure that we have the right accounts. You, know, yeah. you mentioned an account earlier. Um, and, and so another thing to consider when it comes to discipline as well is actually your spending habits. Right? Yeah. You might be the kind of person who's just quick to swipe, quick to spend. Um, and maybe you just need to give yourself, I guess, um, a, a, a way to think about you're spending before you spend it. Absolutely. Um, you know, so you don't fall into that trap of just continuously swiping and spending. Mm. And and so I think the lack of discipline is a big part that covers a lot, but 100%, you will know which area it is that you do need discipline in. I think all of us have an idea. You know, yeah, let's be true. honest. All of us kind of have an inkling that, okay, this, this is my area here. Like, I'm pretty okay with, you know, this, that, and this and that. But mm. when it comes to, like, 
this one thing here or these two or three things there uh, i'm not that good so yeah definitely do the discipline thing in the areas that you feel you need it and i think because you mentioned the whole budget thing guys let's just be honest mm. a budget is useless if you yeah. are not disciplined with your money because it it's it, a budget is just a plan of what you plan to do with your money but if you're not disciplined with the physical money itself mm. A budget won't help you. A budget won't help you. A spreadsheet won't help you. Yeah. Like all these plans that you have with those notebooks where you write stuff down, they won't help you. It starts mm -hmm. with you being disciplined enough to even follow the budget yeah. for you to even succeed at budgeting anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's discipline. That's yeah. a big piece, isn't it? Um, I think the other thing for me, uh, you touched on this, is around income. So when two people get together, obviously now that means there's two incomes. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes, you know, some couples find themselves in a position where they feel like, you know, I've got a little bit more breathing room than I had before yeah. because I was covering the bills by myself. But now that there's two of us maybe sharing the living costs. More money. There's a bit more money, right? More, <laughs> money, more money to play with. But more money to play with also means that you're starting to almost get higher on, higher on supply. I know I don't like that phrase, but it's kind of that this idea where like... Yeah, the fact that you have a little bit more money, you're overestimating like what you can do, what you have, and and even maybe you got to pay a rise to work, yeah. um, or you change careers and are you earning more money than you used to. I think the idea is we kind of feel like okay, now that I'm earning more money, I can breathe. But the reality is because of your lack of discipline and this kind of false narrative that you mm. have about I've got more money than I used to, so I don't need to be disciplined. Well, you still find that actually you're still living like one paycheck away from being broke because you don't have that yeah. cash savings and because you're not building that wealth in the background, whether that's through, you know, property or stocks and shares and things, like, things of that nature, um, or even in your pension, right, through your workplace yeah. and all these other things. So I think um, some people definitely kind of get high off the two income trap and kind of they're like, yeah, we've got more money than we ever need. So we can afford the staycations. We can afford eating out every week. We can yeah. afford this, that and the other. But yes, you can afford to spend but can you afford living without your, that paycheck if anything wants to happen to it? That's the question. Yeah. I also think, uh, I think I go back to the whole uh, saying that to whom much is given, much is expected. Right, yeah. And if you really think about it um, in terms of money, if you, if I give you £50 right now, it's very easy for you to manage £50 because £50, mm -hmm. you allocate it well and stuff like that. But now that you're earning like fifty thousand pounds if you don't learn how to manage the 50 when you've got the 50 it will be very hard for you to manage the the if you don't learn how to manage the 50 pounds when you've got it and now you're earning the 50,000 it will be very hard for you to now start learning how to manage the 50 because when you had less yeah. you were reckless with it yeah. now you have more chances that you'll be even more reckless with it yeah. but the principles that you will have learnt when you had the 50 pounds will mm. help you when you're now managing the 50,000 pounds so to who much is given much is expected yeah so talking about that i think the other thing as well is probably a lack of knowledge um mm. And before, I'll probably say maybe going back like five, ten years ago, I think that excuse would have been fine. Yeah. But let's be honest, these days there's like knowledge at your fingertips. It's almost laziness that keeps yeah. us from learning yeah. in my mind. Now, obviously, I'm not saying you need to learn every single thing, but come on, like you could literally watch maybe 10 YouTube videos and come out of that knowing what you need to know about like budgeting or saving or yeah. investing or paying off your debts um, or paying down your mortgage yeah. or stop using credit cards, you know, um, in a dangerous way and all these other things. I feel like knowledge is literally at your fingertips and there's no other way of saying this. With this one, you just need to like yeah. stop the excuses, stop putting it off and just like learn. The other thing is trying to keep up. Oh. Um, and this one is, I think this one is interesting because there's two ways this can happen. So I'll speak on the first way, which is trying to keep up with other people. Right. <laughs> um, especially as a couple, if you're in a, you know, if, if you're married in a relationship, you find that you tend to then compare yourselves with other similar people in a similar position as you. And then you're starting to think, oh, wait a second, you know, they, they drive that type of car. They drive that type of car. Why aren't we driving that type of car yeah. as well? You know, they've got, they've got, they've bought a house. They've bought a house. We need to buy a house. Yeah. Now, buying a house obviously is a good thing, but I think that mentality that I'm talking about is the type of mentality that keeps you from being disciplined and it keeps you almost chasing after this. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is, but you're just chasing after this, like, 
approval, I guess, from other people just to, just to kind of keep up with what they're doing. But you, like, the, the truth is you don't know people's pockets. You know, you don't know yeah. what people have. You don't know how much people have. You don't know the fact that maybe they've got all of this money saved and they are busy going on like three holidays a year because they've got, you know, they've got the funds to do so. And yet if you try to keep up with them, you'd be pulling out your credit card to yeah. do that, right? So I yeah. think that's the danger that, that you find that mentality kind of traps you. I, I feel like I can actually relate to this one because I feel like we went through a similar thing initially when we were getting married. Like the environment that we were in was like this way, sort of pitted couples against each <laughs> other where it was like, well... So if um, that couple that got married at the same time as you now is driving this type of car or now is living in this kind of house, like, why aren't you doing the same? You all got married at the same time and things like that. Unfortunately, if you're in environments like that and situations like that, if you're not a strong person, number one, or if you're not a yeah. strong couple, number one, and if you're not, well, if you're not a couple that sort of like understands and knows that you're in your own journey and your journey will, will take you however long it takes you to get where you need to get if you don't understand those two things it will be very difficult it will be because now you're in that environment where people are causing you to compare yourself with other people but if yeah. you're not as strong mm -hmm. and if you if you don't know your worth as a couple you will literally go where the wind blows and i feel like we were in that situation and we faced some of that and I think for me, it was very important for us to then sit down and have a conversation about, okay, what do we want for us? Where do we want to get in life? Because if we go the way that the wind is blowing, of course. we can foresee that we'll be, very, we'll be in trouble. There's also the whole trying to keep up your personal image. You may find sometimes that, you know, life, life is lifing, things are happening, and maybe you're dealing with like costs going up and stuff like that. And you find yourselves in a situation where, for example, you've got two cars in your household. You're like, okay, you drive yours, I drive mine. But the way things are going, costs are rising, things are becoming more and more expensive. Instead of deciding that actually, let's let go of one of those cars and right. just focus on having one as a family and just we'll work around it, we'll make things work. Let's just have one car. You decide that actually, no, we're trying to keep up an image here. So we'll keep both cars and... I feel like a lot of people go through this situation. In that moment, what's important is you saying, okay, let, let's set aside the one car and rebuild and make sure that we're in a good place. Once we right. get back to a place where we can afford to have the two cars, then we'll get the second car and be back where we were at. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a lifestyle shift yeah. that we're talking about, isn't it? Um, so where do you go from here? I think practically speaking, it's number one, just kind of facing the truth. You yeah. have to say, listen, let's just face the truth. This is where we are. Yeah. When you are facing the truth, understand right now we are talking about money. Now, money is very emotional. And especially when there's now two of you having this discussion, yeah. things can get heated. So have this conversation in a lighthearted way. This is not about assigning blame as to whose fault it is that we're here. It's really just more around understanding the, the realities of your position. Now, when I'm saying put aside the emotions here, it's really then just talk about the financial figures. You know, this is how much we earn this is how much we are spending or yeah. this is how much we are overspending by and re relying on our credit cards or overdraft to tie us over and have that realistic conversation. I think that is the biggest step you can take mm. right now. Mm. Over time, yes, there's other things you can do, like beefing up your savings, praying down your debts and all that kind of stuff. But I think the very first step you should do is to sit down with your partner and have this candid conversation just around... I'm just letting you know where we are right now. And uh, I would like us to think of a way forward from here. Yeah. Not about whose fault it is. Not about like, it's it's this because of this, because of that. It's just really just about this is where we are and what are we going to do about it. Yeah. So that's what we'd encourage you to do. Let us know in the comments. Um, have you faced this situation before? What did you do differently? How did you change your situation around? We'd love to hear from you. And we can't wait to see you on the next one.